welcome to the Signal Path. Since our last episode, I've received a lot of positive feedback from you guys. So I'm very happy to see that you find the video is beneficial. Today I wanted to do another tutorial and I wanted to focus on operational amplifiers. More specifically, I wanted to talk to you about pulse width modulation generation using operational amplifiers. For those of you who know about PWM, you most likely generate them using microprocessors because PWM signals are very easy to generate in the digital domain. But to generate them in the analog domain is quite interesting and a lot of a possibility to learn a lot about how you can use op amps to do this particular task. And at the same time, I know that a similar lab like this is, is used in the second year electrical engineering course at most universities. So if you familiarize yourself with this topic, you'd be able to do well in that lab. So I will discuss what PWM is and we will then look at how we can generate a PWM signal using op amps, using the least number of op amps. And at, at every step of the way, we will look at the theory a little bit and also how the circuit can be built. And of course, we'll measure it. And at the very, very, very end, I'm going to use a PWM signal to do something very different to make it, uh, the video also more interesting. So we're going to build a, a very high voltage power supply. And we'll get to that at the end of the video. So let's, uh, let's look at the signals, let's look at the circuits, and now uh, see what we can do. So I'm going to assume that most of you have used PWM in some way or another. Basically, a pulse with modulated signal refers to the ability to be able to control the width of a high or a low portion of a square wave. And the ratio between the high portion to the low portion will determine the duty cycle. So by doing that, I can achieve some interesting effects in the analog domain. For example, I can make a, a switching power supply, or I could feed this signal to an LED and then because a human eye averages out through a process called persistence of vision, you won't be able to see the fact that the LED is being turned on and off really quickly. But the average effect is that if the LED is on for a short time and off for a long time, it looks dimmer as if it is on for a long time and off for a short time. So you can have a purely digital mechanism for generating an analog effect for example, like dimming an LED. The other way to dim an LED would be to have a, uh, a potentiometer that you can adjust. But of course, that is, first of all, much more difficult to do in real life. And the main advantage of this is that this can be so easily implemented in the digital domain. So a lot of microprocessors have built-in hardware PWM modules where you program into them what is the exact frequency and exact duty cycle you want, and it will generate a periodic signal like this for you. Unfortunately, because it's become so easy to do this, a lot of people lose appreciation for how these type of signals can be generated or used to be generated purely in the analog domain. And that's why I wanted to do a tutorial like this. So you can see how we can do this using uh, operational amplifiers. And in the process, we can learn a lot about how op amps work. So let's see what would be the easiest way of generating something like this. Well, I could get a signal like this out of a competitor. And if I could adjust the threshold of a competitor, I could then decide how, what is the width of this cycle during, uh, in proportion to the width of this one, if I feed it a triangular wave. So let's take a look at this. Imagine I feed this triangular signal into a competitor, and I set the competitor's threshold right here. So any time this signal is larger than this value, the competitor will give us a high value. And any time it is below this value, the competitor will output a low value. So let's compare these two. Well, during this portion, the signal will be low. As soon as it crosses this threshold, during this portion of the waveform, the signal will be high. And during this larger portion of the signal, it will be low. And again, during this cycle, it will be high. So if I could produce a triangular waveform and give it to a comparator, I could go from here to here. And you can imagine if this threshold was exactly at zero, then this waveform would look like a 50% duty cycle, regular square wave. But generating a, square, a triangular wave like this is not so easy. So what is the easiest way to do this? Think in the analog domain. Well, if I differentiate this, since the signal has a constant slope here and a constant slope here and so on, if I differentiate this, I will go back to having a, uh, a square wave, except that this square wave is going to be 50% duty cycle, a regular normal square wave. So basically, during this cycle, the slope is constant and it's uh, negative. During this, it's positive, negative, positive, and so on. So this, by 
integrating this, I can get this, and by differentiating this, I can get this. So if I want to go this way toward generating uh, a pulse with modulus the signal, I first have to generate a square wave, integrate it, get a triangular wave, put it through a comparator with an adjustable threshold, and get a pulse with modulus the signal. So I can do each of these tasks using a single op amp. So with only three op amps, you can generate, a, you can create a self-generating PWM signal that you can adjust the frequency of by adjusting the frequency of this, and you can adjust the duty cycle by changing the threshold. So let's look at the circuits that can be used to go to make each of these uh, signals. Let's start with, I've already drawn all of them. So let's go back down here, focus into here a little bit. So this up amp is supposed to generate this signal, this up amp is supposed to generate this signal, and this one is supposed to generate this signal. So let's start from the end and back the same way we were talking about the waveforms. So here's an op amp in open loop. So since op amps have such a large open loop gain, if there is no negative feedback mechanism, they will act like comparators. So if I insert or input a triangular waveform into the non-inverting terminal and have control over the voltage of the invert, uh, if I put a triangular wave into the inverting terminal and have control over the voltage, of the non-inverting terminal, I will be able to create a PWM signal. So imagine this waveform going here, and by adjusting this resistor, so I can use a potentiometer here, I could change this voltage, which is the uh, non-inverting terminal, and therefore I can raise this voltage or lower this voltage, which will then shift this threshold either up or down. So if the value of R2 and R1 are exactly the same, then this voltage will be halfway between negative 10 volts and positive 10 volts, so it will be at zero volts. So the threshold will be right here, and then I will get a regular square wave. If I reduce the value of R1, then the potential here will go down, my pulse width modulation will have more low cycles and high cycles, and the other way will be the opposite. So here's a simple uh, adjustable uh, circuit to do that, and you can see mathematically you can easily calculate the threshold voltage. So this voltage node here, let's call that Vx, is minus 10 volts plus R1 divided by R1 plus R2, which is the resistor divider ratio times 20, which is the total potential difference between these two. So by using this equation, you can find out the exact threshold of um, the um, comparator. Now let's go back one one signal. So this guy is supposed to act like an integrator. So this is a very classic circuit. Let's for a moment forget about the, the fact that the resistor R2 is here. Let's only concentrate on the value of R1 and C1. Now we know that since this is in negative feedback, that the open loop, the closed loop gain of this amplifier is minus 1 divided by R1 C1 S in the Laplace domain, which then if you substitute for J omega, you will get 1 over J omega R1 C1. So I'm not going to get into too much detail. Uh, I'm assuming that you guys are somewhat familiar with the theory of this, but I would like to hear some feedback in terms of if you want to go into more details like this, or you'd like to stick more to the practical aspect of things. And uh, But there is a little problem with this circuit, is that if you look at DC, this capacitor is an open circuit, so then this integrator has no feedback anymore around it. So, they, so basically it has a potential of uh, producing undesired voltage at the output at DC due to many things like offsets and leakage and so on. So by adding a resistor across the capacitor, you control the DC loop gain as well as the high frequency. So this equation for the response is for values of uh, frequency which are larger than 1 over R2 C2, which is a time constant of this R and C. So I hope this is not like, getting too complicated. So let's look at now, finally, the first signal. So I want to make uh, a circuit using an op-amp that can generate a score wave. So basically, I want to make an oscillator. And making an oscillator from an op-amp is quite easy because there's a lot of gain, and it's easy to use it in positive feedback to get an oscillator out of it. So let's look at this circuit, which is probably the most complicated of the all three. So this has both signal coming back to the negative terminal as well as signals coming back to the positive terminal. Let's for a moment imagine that these two R's are exactly the same. So if the value at the output is high, then these two resistors will divide that value by 2 and produce uh, the positive power supply divided by 2 here. If the, if the output is low, then the, the same thing will happen. They will divide the signal by 2 and put 
half of that additional. At the same time, this capacitor will charge through this resistor depending on whether this, pos this voltage is positive or negative. If this voltage is positive, it will charge up. If this voltage jumps to negative, it, then it will discharge. But because this voltage is a function of the output, and this voltage is a function of the output, and they go in opposite direction, you can actually create a square wave out of it. So this guy goes high, this guy starts to charge, this voltage goes uh, above this, the output switches to the negative value, this goes stays negative, this starts to discharge, and then this cycle repeats. And you can actually calculate the exact frequency of oscillation with this architecture, and if I assume the R's are the same, the frequency of oscillation is 1 over 2 times Rx Cx ln of the value 3. This 3 comes from the, uh, the ratio of the, the, the fact that the resistive dividers is, uh, are equal. So it's R equal to R, so it's just a half the voltage. So what I want to do is I want to build all these three circuits in a row, put them on a breadboard, and then we can measure the output of the first one, see if it looks like that, and if it is indeed equal to this, if we can calculate and set the frequency based on this equation, then we'll make an integrator as a second stage, and then we'll measure it, see if in fact we are getting a triangular wave at the output here, and then finally we would measure the output here to see if we are getting a positive modulation. By adjusting this resistor, I should be able to control the frequency, because Rx shows up here. By adjusting this resistor, I can make sure that I can get a perfect triangular wave, meaning that the cycle, the integration constant, is not too high or too low, so that based on the frequency, I can get a perfect triangle wave, so I can control R1, which shows up in this equation. And then here, by controlling this R1, I should be able to change the threshold, meaning I should be able to change the duty cycle. So I could I will be able to set the duty cycle by setting the value of R1, which shows up in this equation. So some theory, some circuit design, and the outputs. So now we can go ahead to the lab and actually measure to make sure that if this thing works.